Welcome back everybody. Here we go again. We're putting out these awesome tutorials for you guys every few days. Um, I'm hoping that we can eventually get you to a full year and don't start together very, very soon. If you're following around right now, you know that we just got to almost the end of springtime. Things are getting pretty spicy as we get ourselves ready for summer. If you don't know me, uh, my name is All Fun and Games. Um, I do lots of streaming on Twitch TV. I stream twice a day, every single day. I play lots of Don't Starve Together. Uh, I play plenty of other games as well too. So if you'd like to follow along, you can join the Discord. You can follow me on Twitch, or you can of course just follow along on YouTube. I upload all of my videos from Twitch TV here, uh, including other guides as well too. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you've enjoyed it, and if you found that it's helped you out at all, please comment below. If you have any questions, so. I've been getting a lot of people that have actually messaged me on Discord asking me specific questions. If you have any questions, feel free to just put them in the comments um, and I'll try to answer them there. It's always nice to see the comment section nice and filled. So if you enjoyed it, if you watched it, just comment anything. Doesn't matter if it's the letter T or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just, just comment down below because I love seeing uh, and being able to react to all, all the comments down below. So let's get in here as we get started on our day 54. We're already past day 50, things are getting crazy. Okay, so last we left off, we were getting to the point where uh, we were, things are starting to get a little bit warm outside as we get ready for summertime, which, as you know, is my least favorite season. Uh, wintertime, if you thought winter was hard, summertime is going to be even more tough. So we have to be prepared, we have to be ready, and we have to make sure that whatever we do, we're not getting too warm. Um, so... There's a few things to kind of get ready for summer, which we've already done. Um, and as we kind of can, uh, connect into the server, I can, can I can show you real quick um, exactly what we were doing before and to kind of refresh everyone's memory. Um, but first things that we were just getting started, and there we are, we're inside the world. And we're just gonna wait for our little friends to connect. Um, before we logged off last time, uh, we ran around and we were killing the moose goose so we could show you guys how to do that. But let's go back to our base though. Let's get back home. Uh, let's get all the way over there. Get our, uh, put our walking cane in our hand as we run back. Let's go through our wormhole. Nice little shortcut here. Whew. And as we get back, we're gonna kind of go over the checklist as we prepare ourselves for summer. So of course I use a mod that shows us when you know spring and all that stuff's about to happen. So if you don't have that, you can follow along with the mods that I use. Um, it's also listed on the tutorial tips um, on YouTube where I kind of discuss all the different uh, mods I use. It's also on the very first episode of my guide as well too. So um, that's how I'm able to see how much time is left. Before we go any further, let's drop off our frog legs, which are now overflowing our fridge. Wow, we have lots and lots of stuff. A bunch of things are actually starting to go uh, bad as well too. So hopefully we uh, we manage to, to fix that up a little bit. But um, as of right now, let's go ahead and, and fill our bellies up with these butterflies. Instead of making butter muffins, I'm just gonna eat the butterflies um, as is. Let's drop off some stuff at home so we don't have to fill our, keep our inventory nice and uh, filled up. Let's drop off our junky little log suits, and once again, try to put your try to put your um, armor and anything that has to do with battling things and fighting stuff kind of together. So then that way it's easier to find and easier to locate. Um, okay, so things are checklist for summertime. So if you guys are following along to this point, um, you've kind of copied everything that we've done. You know we have both of our endothermic fire pits, which are going to keep us nice and cooled for winter or for for summertime. We have one there, we have one near the hound's traps. Um, and as we go on further on, uh, we will make sure that you know we continue to kind of check off all the other lists. So we have those two, we have our two fling -matics, and we even have a, an extra fling matic pre-built as well too. Now the reason why I always have an extra fling matic and extra things already pre-built is because you never know when you're gonna need them. So a lot of the times people always wander around, all of a sudden it gets nighttime and they're like, uh oh, I forgot I don't have any grass. If you pre-build something and pre-craft something, you can immediately have that ready to go. Now, keep in mind, you can't pre-craft like an item, like a torch. That'll obviously take up an inventory space, um, but you can pre-craft like buildings and structures. And that's always a good way of, of getting that going. So we're gonna continue uh, doing that. So we have our, our science machine pre-crafted. We have our uh, flingomatic pre-crafted, but I'm gonna actually pre-craft another thing as we get ready for showing you how to kind of get past summertime and or kind of live live through summer a little bit easier oh it looks like we actually used all of our gears uh oh okay well that's not a problem not a huge problem in itself um 
But if we do manage to get one more gear, uh, that'll help us out. Let's go ahead and repair our umbrella. If you guys are using it, make sure that you just keep the sewing kit nice on you uh, in case you want to repair some stuff. And let's get some more resources. So as we continue on, we're going to do two things in the morning. We're going to get going over to the Oasis. Now, how do you tell where the Oasis is? Well, the Oasis looks exactly like the desert, the D-Fly area where we've showcased before where to get cactus from and whatnot. Um, but it's right next to it. And you can notice that it is because it has a little biome in it that has a little pond looking thing on the um, on the map. So that's exactly how you know where your, your oasis is. Generally speaking, the oasis and the desert are not really touching that often. But in this case, you know, we got a little unlucky and they're kind of joined together, which is okay. So as we pick up all of our twigs and pick up all of our grass, uh, we're going to start to wonder, like, what are we going to get ready to go into the oasis for? There's a few reasons. So during summertime, a few things happen. One, obviously everything gets very, very toasty very quickly. So we need our we need to make sure that we have our flingomatic ready. We need to make sure that we have everything in order to keep us nice and cool. But number two, we need to make sure that we decide on what to do about an upcoming boss. So just like in springtime, uh, we have our boss like the Moose Goose. The difference is the Moose Goose doesn't actually attack you directly. Um, it basically just wanders around. And if you come across it, then it'll attack you. But just like in, in winter time, when the deer clops showed up at our base, there's another a thing to worry about in summertime and that's called the ant lion now the ant lion i can't show you right now because we have to wait until until summer hits and until th uh, certain things happen but the ant lion will destroy your base from afar so even though the ant lion is in the oasis during during summer uh what it will end up happening is the ant lion will basically wait a few days uh, until the ant lion's angry enough and a few days have passed in summer and the ant lion will strike and when the ant lion strikes from afar uh, it basically collapses and creates craters underneath structures within your base your character will say things like oh no like uh, do i feel a rumble or s things like that and two minutes later you're going to notice that there's going to be craters and little you know little structures being damaged within your base so there's a few options we have. One, we could go and live inside the caves, which would still cause an, uh, a different effect to happen. Living in the caves will stop the effect from uh, our, the summer heat. It'll also promote us to you know, make a new base and kind of get new resources underground, which is an option in our base. We wouldn't have to worry about it catching in flames. Another option is living in the oasis temporarily while we get ready in the oasis, we have to do something in order to fight the ant lion. Uh, and there's two options. So they're, altogether, there's three options. One, we, we live in the caves. We then fish for something that we're going to need. And what are we going to need? I'm going to tell you in a second. Uh, and let's go over to the Oasis right now so I can kind of go through that. So even though it's the last day of spring, um, I'm actually, you know what? Let's do something real quick. Let's grab these berries while I finish talking and explaining a few things. Okay. So once again, during summertime, you can go right into the caves. I would not suggest waiting till the last second to go into the caves. I would, you know, do it like the day before, get yourself a little base ready, uh, then kind of go down in the caves. I'm going to show you all three ways of what I'm going to recommend. Recommend. The second option is going and living in the oasis, living over here until summer begins, and then start to plan out your attack uh, against the ant lion. Once you kill the ant lion, you're ready to go for the entire summer. You don't have to worry about the ant lion returning summertime until the next season uh, when summertime hits. Then, of course, you're going to have to worry about it then. So, the way that I'm going to show you first is I'm going to get a little base ready to go in the oasis. Then I'm also going to get a base ready to go in the caves. So we have kind of both to choose from. Then I'm going to show you how to kill the ant lion. And then once we kill the ant lion, I'm going to show you two ways of killing the ant lion. So a little bit, a lot of actual information coming uh, your way right now. So it might be a little bit hard to kind of follow along at this point but do your best and like i said if worst case scenario you can't uh you, you know it doesn't work out for you where you were not able to do it like we did you can also fall back to the second or third option of what i gave you because i'm gonna i'm gonna make it as easy as i can for you so once again we have two friends here with us which brings a total of three players in the game so as we prepare for the ant lion, a few things we go on, I kind of want to mention. So if you remember when we were fighting the deer clops, I showed you an attack pattern on how to resist uh, getting hit by the deer clops. And even if you did, you could easily kill the deer clops with more than one person because the deer clops doesn't have too much HP. So as long as you're prepared, you can easily kill it. 
So the ant lion is kind of the sim in the similar situation as that. The ant lion also has the ability to take a few hits and then die, but it also retaliates a lot stronger, in my opinion, than the deer clops does because you're going to see why very shortly. So it's a lot of information to kind of take in, but like I said, we're going to prepare as best as we can. Uh, we're going to gather all of our resources. We're going to get a lot of uh, we're going to get a lot of defenses. But there's a few things that we're going to start gathering. We're going to gather a lot more logs. We're going to gather a lot more armor. We're going to try to get um, as many pierogies ready to go, which we already have our 27 pierogies that should hopefully last us to the beginning. Uh, let's go like this. I'm actually going to eat this, even though it's going to hurt my sanity a lot, just because it doesn't really bother me about my sanity this minute um and let's go over and take a little peek and bring some let's bring some meatballs with us okay so as we go over to the oasis i want to bring and and drop off a few things there um and we're going to kind of go over what needs to be done once we get to the oasis so it doesn't look like there's any wormholes there there are wormholes close by but they don't seem to actually they don't seem to be actually be like anywhere near us. Like we had the one that was in our base that actually led us kind of somewhat close to the pig king, but it looks like our wormhole selection is not that good. So if you have better wormholes than I do, feel free to, you know, use your worm wormholes on, on the way there. Don't bother walking like I am. But so far, our sites are 1000% focused on summer activity and summer activity only. If you're playing Wilson like I am, uh, you're going to want to make sure that as soon as day one of summertime hits, you're going to want to shave your beard. You could wait till day two or day three, but honestly, like the faster you shave your beard, the better. So in all honesty, I would probably suggest doing it right away. If you have the resources on you, you don't have to run all the way back home. In order to do that, you can literally just make yourself a razor because we've already pre-crafted the razor before. So you can actually shave on the go. I'm actually going to do that because as soon as I get to the Oasis, I'm going to start making a little tiny little base there and I'm going to kind of get things situated so that way we can kind of show you the alternate way of living through uh, the summer. Now, if you find that going through different biomes is a harsh uh, thing in the summer, like I said, you could live in the caves, which a lot of people early on in their DST exploration decide to do but i feel like if you're going to learn the way of don't starve together and you want to learn the true way of survival i really do think you should avoid jumping into the caves unless you absolutely have to because the more that you use the caves as like a crutch in the game you're going to you're going to eventually want to learn how to actually survive on the surface which to be honest with you it makes me more not like it doesn't make me better, but it does. It makes me more appreciate the game more instead of actually just going into the caves. Okay, so we get to the oasis. We see a few things here. Obviously, you know, we see our bed, a little straw roll. We see a grass suit, and we see a fishing rod. Why do we need a fishing rod? Well, as soon as summertime hits in just a moment here, as soon as the morning hits, you're gonna see a change happen in the oasis. This little stump-looking thing is going to open up, and it's going to create a, a large. Uh, it's going to create a large pond here and once we get that pond open up we can begin to fish in it and once we get inside once we start fishing in there we're going to get things like fish we're going to get lots of trinkets but more so we're going to get blueprints and we're going to this is the only way to acquire a specific blueprint so before we get too far ahead i want to make a little base here so let's put our flingomatic down here that i've already pre-crafted not necessarily that you need a flingomatic in the oasis so you don't have to copy this specifically but because i I don't want to risk my base burning up like prematurely or whatnot i'm going to start getting myself uh, a little base prepared so we have a, our fire pit that's within the flingomatic range which is okay uh, i'm going to hopefully uh, get myself an endothermic fire pit down the road when i have more resources but for now i'm not going to worry about that because i'm going to be traveling back home let's get ourselves a little science machine in case i need to pre-craft anything and as time goes on we're going to begin working on our little base here so this is a temporary base this is not going to be where we're going to be living in the future for a very long time or anything like that but at least uh, at the very least we can get ourselves prepared um to make a you know little trips here and there we want to make sure that we have um resources in case we want to stay out here for like a little bit longer living in uh, living within the oasis early on in a beginner guide uh sorry beginners days and dst i probably would not recommend doing it but in the future um the oasis is a good spot to live because it blocks uh it blocks overheat like not overheating the blocks uh fire spread um and it just it becomes sometimes people's favorites um, within Don't Starve Together. So 
The only reason why I'm showing and making a little base right now is because I feel like some people always ask the question, well, I've been hearing living in the Oasis is a good option. Would you agree? You know, and it's completely up to the person specifically, but I think just making a temporary little base here is perfectly fine. You don't need to rely on this base a hundred percent. So we have our fling matic We have our science machine. Um, eventually I'd like to get a little fridge out here, potentially one crock bot or two, um, and just kind of get yourself like some small little base. Uh, I'm a little bit low on logs we used it for all of our log suits um, but as time goes on i'm, I'm going to begin to start smashing up and, and chopping down all these trees so i can gather more resources so just get yourself something basic like i said if you have the gears for it make yourself another fridge out here put a little bit of food in there um, because we're going to need that for when we decide to fight the ant lion and that's what this is all about right you're not gonna you don't necessarily want to live out here if you're if you're struggling because I, in the morning here we're going to see something change now as the morning hits and as summer approaches the it's beginning to rain as you can see so let's get ready for summer look at that day one of summer everybody and there's a change but nothing's happening so far and why is that because as the game is rain as the game is raining as you can see right now the oasis cannot change yet the oasis needs to wait until the wetness dries up on the ground and then the storm will come so you managed to make it this far. You managed to have our base. We're now approaching summertime. Here it goes. This is where the fun begins. This is where the craziness starts. As we get into summertime, things are about to get a lot more spicy for us. Um, and a lot of things are about to happen. So get ready for the next few episodes here because it's going to be lots of information and in a short amount of time. You do, If you ever feel overwhelmed and you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask in the comments. Or once again, find me on Twitch TV. I stream twice a day, all fun and games. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Let's get ready for summertime. And I will see you guys in the next episode as we approach for summertime and, and fighting the antlion.